Welcome again to the Science of RVs and today we're going to talk about sound and thermal insulation and how to combine them to get the best results. Because quite often the, the methods for sound in some areas are complementary but in others are not complementary in terms of thermal insulation. So how do you get the best out of both? Well, I'm going to take you through some, some theories on that. But before we start, I'm going to do a little experiment. Okay. Let's do a little experiment. So here I have the old two cups and string, and I have a decibel meter. So, whoop, let's put it over there where we can see it. So, let's talk in one end, or make a noise in one end, and see what score we get. Seventy-one to seventy-three. Now let's make the string talk. Ooh, where we can see it. That's 81 to 83. That's 10 decibels louder, which is almost double the energy. And also, I was further away. So in reality, that should have gone down, not up. So, interesting there. Now, what's going on? Well, what's happening is... While this string is loose, it can't transmit. All the sound waves are just getting damped out. But as soon as it's stiff, that can conduct the uh, sound waves quite effectively. So think about if I've got an inner wall and an outer wall, and they're connected by a damping medium like rubber, great. But the moment I put a nail or a screw through those from one to the other and put a hard, hard connection in, that's going to really amplify or, or transmit that sound straight from one layer to other. And I've destroyed all my effort at soundproofing that room. Sound deadening materials, such as this rubberized, uh, this is bitumen based with a foil on the surface, but you can get this obviously rubber normally, this is only one millimeter, normally it'd be two to four millimeters thick. And I've got a bit of pipe, which I'm going to bash and let's see how it sounds. Bit of a ring tone there. Now let's try and attach a piece of this material. Not everywhere, but and let's see what effect that has. Deadened, dush. It's a much duller sound than without. So that's what this stuff's doing. It's deadening that ringing tone, particularly here at high frequencies. It's just stopping this, re not resonate, but stopping this vibrate. So quite effective. I'm going to use the good old decibel meter and I'm going to separate myself from it with mineral wall insulation and a rubberized exercise mat to see the difference between absorption and blocking. So let's do the uh, clear the voice with this one first. And then, back to back. Let's try this one. Not scientific, but not unscientific either. So what do we learn from those four experiments? Well, first of all, what we learn is don't hard connect two things together if you don't want sound to pass through. So if that string was a nail or a screw and I've put that from one isolated medium to another, I've almost ruined all that effort to try and isolate sound because I've got a hard connection somewhere. And that's why when you see an acoustic systems for things like recording studios, they try to isolate various areas of the room so there's no strong pathway for the noise to travel along. <coughs> Um, the other thing that we learned is that we can dampen the vibrations using mass. This stuff doesn't work because it's rubber per se. It works because it's mass. And I'll include a link that will show the effect. Now, to properly stop sound travelling along and through, you need to add mass. But you also need to add mass to about 
90% of the area plus. You need to add it to as much of the area as you can. So just a little bit of a patch in the middle will help you with the thuddy, the, the dulling noise, but it will be much, much more effective if you put a lot more on, which I'll show you. Now, the um, third experiment, um, that showed us a difference between um, transmission or, or, or blocking and dampening or, 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 or absorption. Um, the mineral wool can absorb noise, particularly higher frequencies, where the, the sound waves that come out of my mouth hit those fibres and go all over the place, but it was still getting through. Um, whereas the rubber mat um, blocked the noise, and a lot of it, it actually sounded louder to me behind that mat than it did behind the, 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 rock wool, the, the, the rock wool insulation, the mineral wool insulation, because it was all reverberating back at me. And that was a real surprise to me. So when the result came back in and it had dropped from about 70 odd with the mineral wool to 60 odd, you know, that's a significant difference in terms of energy. So that just shows that mass is the thing that blocks sound. Um, absorption materials like mineral wool help absorb in specific frequency ranges, but it doesn't block. The sound, can, sound waves can still get through. So how does that affect us with our RVs and trying to balance thermal insulation from sound insulation? So I don't think it'll come as certainly a great surprise that you've got two fundamental mechanisms fighting with each other. For sound, to block sound, we want lots of mass, high density. Um, unfortunately, high density in its purest form isn't probably going to be the best thermal insulator. Um, the conductivity of things like uh, rocks, steel, metals, you know, ain't, ain't great. Um, so, and also in our RVs, do we want lots of mass? So if we're going to use mass, we've got to use it really, really forensically and carefully. Um, at the same time as if we want to control the, the environment of the sound, the time the sounds we're hearing, then we can use absorption materials and that's great because rock wool, mineral fibre, glass fibre insulation um, is great at um, managing some of the sound waves in the, uh, that gets to our ears. And it can also be a good thermal insulator. Um, I've put up the table that's combined a little bit of what we know from different materials. So what it's telling us is that we know that rock wool is a reasonable material from a thermal point of view and can give us sound absorption properties. So that can have a foot in both camps, sound and thermal. We know Celotex, being a rigid foam, is terrific at um, insulation, num numero uno almost. But unfortunately, because it's rigid, it's not great at sounding, at managing sound. So, not a foot in both camps. We know that the uh, thin uh, aluminium foil bubble wrappy type materials, they're going to do nothing for sound. They've got almost no mass. Sound's going to go straight through them um, uh, or it's going to reverberate with, with the sound. And also, um, in, in, in terms of thermal, it, it has a role for managing radiant energy but not conductive. So if we're going to use it, we have to use it with a gap. Um, and then we get into the, the, the types of rubber materials, and I've put two in there. One is what's called heavily loaded um, vinyl, people call it, and it's basically very dense, five kilo per square meter for a couple of millimeters rubber, and that's great at deadening sound. Um, kind of stuff that's used in, in this stuff, um, because it's heavy. Um, but you can get the expanded rubber, which um, I used in my experiment, and it was a, an exercise mat, and that's not as heavy, um, but it's still not uh, it's not as light as your rock wool, for example. But that does also have reasonable insulation properties because of all the little air pockets that's throughout it. So how do we make best use of those? Now, something that I just said we, we need to consider. If we're going to use a radiant barrier, we have to have a cavity. If we have a cavity, then noise has an opportunity to reverberate and, and, and bounce around it unless we use a sound absorbing or if the sound's got into that cavity we need to have had sound absorb or absorbent material that would suggest that you would want to use 
rock wall in that area. But that means you don't want to face it with foil. So as soon as you face it with foil, the sound waves can't get into, the pressure waves can't get into that absorbent material in the same way as they would ordinarily. It's not so good. Um, so it's still going to bounce around and you could effectively get, a, not an echo chip, a, a boom box type effect where you get diff different sound waves interacting and bouncing off. Um, so that's one concern. The other concern is we need an inch to an inch and a half and that's going to take quite a bit of space uh, inside your vehicle, which might be important to some. So if we think about the radiation, the radiant heat, so the sun hits the outside of our RV, it makes the skin of our RV hot. It's hot whatever we want, whatever we want to do. Now, if we want to stop, uh, we can stop that heat transmitting into our vehicle in two ways. One is we can stop the inside surface radiating its heat across the cavity to the next layer, and that's where the silver foil comes in. Great, uh, but then I need a cavity. Or we can just put an insulator right up against it and stop the conduction. Now, is that going to help sound? Not really. If the sound's going to hit the outside of my vehicle, it's metallic, it's going to pass to the inside. And that little cavity would do wonders for me, To um, uh, could do wonders to help that. But if I put the mass barrier immediately on the inside of my skin, I can stop as much of that sound as possible getting into my vehicle in the first place through the walls, then maybe I've got a fighting chance. And then I don't really worry about the um, radiant barriers. I just put my insulation right up against it and try and control thermal uh, conduction um, and just take ra radiant energy out of, the, uh, out of the thing completely. That doesn't stop me putting a silver foil inside cupboards in any area that I can to um, stop any heat that reaches the inside of my, of, of my thermal barrier radiating into my living space. And likewise, any heat I generate in my living space being reflected straight back, back into the living space. So I, I can use that where I can, but I think for an RV, the notion of having this cavity with an insulation ain't good. The other issue is if I have an open cavity and I've got a material like rock wall that you can get in panels, but it's still relatively flexible, it'll need some kind of support. Well, um, that's not, that I wouldn't want rock wall board being hidden in a wall on a vehicle that moves so much knowing it's not going to go anywhere. So I'm going to want to put some kind of support in. And if I've got structure in there, that means I have more ability to transmit sound and I've got to worry more about isolation. So in that scenario, I probably more likely want to use Celotex. But Celotex, again, is a sound transmission, even though thermally it's very good. So what's the long and the short that is? I think we've got to forget managing radiant heat from the inside skin of our vehicle and coating it in silver foil. But we will apply a rubber membrane to the inside to give us um, sound dampening properties. Um, we will then put a rock wall type insulation right up against the outer skin. That's that's good from a from a thermal point of view because I've got a thermal a good thermal barrier, a good insulator, um, trying to manage the conducted heat. From an acoustic point of view, I'd had rather it didn't touch. But um, I've tried to manage the sound through my mass barrier in the first place. The reality is I'm going to have to put stud, studding up anyway to hold, the, uh, to, to hold the insulation and I may choose just to leave a little bit of a gap at the back of insulation and if over time it moves a little well I've tried to do the best I can but at least I've got a small air gap um, uh, inside there. Now again above my head I'm just flashing up the scheme of what I'm going to do to try and insulate my vehicle. Um, I've assumed that I have metallic reinforcing structure or the frame of my vehicle to the outside skin. If I've got a plast if I've got a, a composite skin, so a fiberglass um, um, insulation and then, a, and then a, a cladding on the inside, you still have structure um, 
aluminium or wood structure that you need to tie into. So I've shown schemes for both. And basically what both schemes do is just what I've said. Forget managing radiant heat and giving ourselves a, a, a centimetre gap. And that means that we will want to use rock wool uh, because that gives us acoustic benefits. And then you'll see that where any, there's any structure like frames, I've isolated those by using essentially the, uh, the exercise mat type um, uh, foamed rubber um, underneath, underneath the heads of bolts, underneath here, um, use uh, acoustic glue, make the hole, make, make any, any holes that you have in your structure bigger than, bigger than the shaft that's going through it. Um, so that effectively I could put a load of acoustic glue in my hole and my bolt or my screw isn't touching the wood and I've got acoustic material under the head of my, of my uh, screw or, or bolt. So essentially my bolt is not touching my, or my screw isn't touching my wood, it's touching some kind of damping medium, which means I need to also recess the top of here, I need to recess the other side, or I need to use rubber washers and stuff. So that the old string effect. I'm trying to avoid this. I'm trying to create that. So I'm going to use um, I'm going to use rubber washers, acoustic glue, recesses. Make sure that I recess this head on the surface so that when I come to clad it, I'm not touching the head of my bolt. So that's under the surface. I'll probably cover it and a little bit of acoustic glue as well. Um, but again, make sure that acoustic glue doesn't come to the surface. So if the glue does start to vibrate, it's not transmitting to whatever clad on top of it. So have a look at those two schemes. Um, I've, I've long, thought long and hard of this, and there's many ways to skin this cat. But I think for the kind of... Uh, um, uh, in an RV, we want to minimise mass if we can, but in reality that means we get sound. So for the wall structures of my RV, I'm going to be using... Uh, rubber for mass. I'm going to be using um, rock wool type products for acoustic management, and then on the inner skin, I'm going to use a wooden wooden uh, studs only where I need to. I'm going to minimise those. I'm going to isolate those from the outer structure using rubber and acoustic. And then on the inner skin, again, mass is key, but not mass in one layer. So I'm going to use two thin layers of ply, either four or six millimetres, I might use three. And in between the two layers, I'm going to put acoustic glue. And what that does is it makes it means you've got a 12 millimetre, half an inch thick um, cladding, a wooden cladding on the inside of your vehicle, which will be great for sound management. But more importantly, that um, bead of adhesive between the two layers allows the layer to shear against each other when sound hits them and that is a terrific deadening um, uh, mechanism called mass damping um, so and the more layers you have the more effective it is so i will lay in my first layer of ply and nice and thin i can curve it and stuff uh, attach it to me studs in the scheme as i've showed you and then i'm going to glue it up and then i'm going to add another layer um, depending how our energetic I'm feeling. It depends on whether it's going to be two layers of ply or three. If I go to three, I'll use four millimetre ply. If I go to two, I'll use six. And that's a great medium for me to then attach things to because it should be quite robust and sturdy. So the ply and the glue in between the layers, as shown in the diagram, gives me my mass damping, as does the rubber on the outside. And then I use the rock wool on the inside and I'm managing conducti conductive heat, not radiant heat. And I'll use a, a, a silver foil on surfaces that I'm basically not going to see. Um, because if I cover it up with something else, I may as well not have a foil there. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, the rubber mat is going to cost me. Now, important, where am I going to do this? I'm for sure going to do it in the bedroom. I'm going to use a rubber mat in the bedroom. Am I going to use a rubber mat? in the bathroom yes probably and i mean all around the bathroom just for privacy and make sure i seal the door so there's no light can get through using draft exclusions and stuff so i can have a bit of privacy when i'm on the toilet um i'm going to use it under the floor um on, on the floor as well i'm going to put a a rubber mat um and an insulation probably sellotex unfortunately on the floor but a rubber mat and a rubber mat on top to try and manage <clears throat> vibration there am i going to use it in my kitchen area and my lounge area, 
Probably not. I'll probably just go with standard insulation and forget the rubber mat. And by being selective at where I choose to use it, I can keep the cost down. Because a rubber mat, um, the high density rubber, is going to cost you 11 to 12 pounds a square metre, so it can add up to be quite expensive. Your rock wool is going to be of the order of just under a five or a square metre. So it just shows you that the, the acoustic insulation is going to be relatively expensive. Um, when I glue my two bits of uh, fibreboard together, um, there's a product called Green Glue. That's quite expensive. That's about £6 a, a tube for a mastic gun. Um, that can be quite expensive. I guess if you're not using a lot of it, it's not that expensive. Um, there are other products out there that can probably do a similar job. Um, so, so be selective where you use the acoustic, um, the acoustic uh, dampening, particularly the rubber. Um, if you want to, um, and it doesn't, you can get acoustic foams, but then they're really equivalent to your rock wall, and they're just trying to manage, manage sound waves. They're not trying to block it. So if you're trying to block it and more privacy, then uh, then that's that's um, what you need to consider. And now we need to talk about windows. So I've taken care of my walls, but what am I going to do about my windows? Because to be honest, they're quite a big area, and you know we've got a couple of fundamental problems with the windows. We know that the 20 times more conductive than uh, insulation is. We know that unless they're double glazed or triple glazed, they're no great acoustic barrier either. Um, so, so what do we do about those? Well, um, thermal, number one, don't let the heat in. As soon as it gets in, you got trouble. And the heat that's coming into your window is radiant heat. It's your sun just hitting that glass the glass is getting hot or it's going straight through because it's transparent, uh, effectively. So, number one, stop the, stop the sun getting in. And that means get your awning out. Get it out. Get your windows in shade. That's issue number one. Solved. If that's not possible, then you're going to have a couple of... There's a couple of products out there. There's a few products out there that are there to try and manage that radiant heat coming in. Number one is a uh, an external radiant mesh that you can buy. These clip on. Um, it looks like um, it looks like a, a sheet of of, of, of fibre mesh. Um, it is transparent, so you can look through it at the, at, from the inside out. And it looks from the inside out like you put a tint on your window. But actually, they clip on to the outside of your vehicle on lugs. So you've got to remove it if you're going to travel. Now, if you haven't got that many windows or windows that's going to be in the sun, that might not be such a problem. Because if you think about it, um, it's probably only one side of my vehicle that's going to get the sun uh, in the day if I park one side. So I only need mesh for one side. And if I can spin the other side, normally the windows are symmetrical, so I can clip it on the other side. Now, that stuff doesn't come in cheap. It comes out about £32.50 a square metre. Um, that includes all the kits to fit it and stuff. So it's, it's, it's not cheap. Um, but um, it stops 90 odd percent of the radiant heat getting into your vehicle. Of course, the next thing to say is, if you've got double glazing, if, you, if you've got single glazing, um, double glazing is clearly a lot better, triple glazing is even better than that. If you want to spend big bucks, get yourself triple glazing, but there's a product called e-glass, and what that does, it's a film on the, um, on the inner, inner surface of the inner plane of glass, and it reflects most of the radiant heat back out. So that means that, that has a much better thermal performance as a glazing unit um, than without it. Now, obviously, if you're going to use the radiant films on the uh, radiant mesh on the outside, it'll stop an awful lot of that, of that getting in as well as an aftermarket product. If you don't want to spend that kind of book, the next thing you can do is just put um, a tinted film onto your window. And these are self-adhesive films you can buy them in a roll and you fit them yourself. Um, it's a very thin film. Um, those, let me have a look at my chart down here. Those, for a good one, that's going to block, again, about 90% of the, the radiant heat. They're about six, six pound fifty um, a square metre. So much, much cheaper than the mesh. Probably not as effective because you'll, you well, they're just a much thinner layer. Um, I haven't got any test evidence. I've been looking for, for what amount of, radiant, uh, of radiation... Uh, they, they cover, but that's another option. They certainly, um, the studies that did show that they reduce the temperature inside a vehicle, a car, 
by a couple of degrees by just putting the mesh on. And more importantly, um, they, they monitored the, the comfort standard of the occupants and where you were burning your arm uh, as, you, as you're driving along and your arm was getting sunburned, um, they found that that didn't happen just by using a film. And of course, that means that the radiant heat isn't hitting that surface. And if you're not there, it's going to be hitting the furniture inside your RV. So they do have a place and they're um, significantly cheaper. Um, if I'm honest, the problem I have with the window meshes is they're very dark um, and they don't look particularly pretty. Putting a film on um, just looks like you've got tinted windows. So, so that's, that's a, a good option. The next option that a lot of people use is a, um, essentially the, the bubble wrap covered in foil um, as panels inside the windows and they just either Velcro on or they've got suction pads that they suck on. Um, that's a radiant barrier. Same kind of stuff that people use in insulation. You can use that. Um, lots of people do and get great benefit. It means you can't look out your window, but it keeps the, um, it keeps the, uh, the radiant heat back out. A lot of people stick it right up to the glass. They get a little bit more benefit again if they just had it slightly off the off the glass. So that's another option. If you don't want, if you want to be looking through your windows, um, or you don't want to have separate pieces of kit that you've got to store away somewhere, then you can get thermal curtains and thermal blinds. Now, what these tend to be is just thicker fabric, and they have a a rubberized medium on the window side and that's white that's going to help reflect now if you put a foil products and the emergency blankets are great because they're kind of a rubberized foil me I'm going to stick those on the inside of my blinds um, to reflect the heat out so if it's getting a bit hot I can just draw my blind down stop the sun getting in the other advantage of that is um, if I use a, a, a slightly thin foam material in my blinds which I can because they're blinds then I can get a little bit of sound deadening as well um, so that's blinds curtains are the same um, obviously you just draw across they're thick heavy fabrics they have again a, a, a coating on the window side of them for blinds you're going to be spending around about uh, 13 pounds a square meter for curtains that are about the same 12 13 pounds a square meter um, for the foils, uh, the reflective foils, again, let me have a look, you're going to be paying about £5.35 a square metre. So those are the prices. It's in the table that I've, um, I've, I've shared with you. So those are the options to manage the temperature getting into your glass. Now, what do those products do for sound? Well, of course, your external mesh, your film, they're going to do almost nothing. Uh, your blinds and your curtains might give you benefit. It's not going to stop the air getting out and around unless you have nice tight seals. Myself, I'm going to have channels that my blinds run in, so they are going to be enclosed at the sides. So if I bring my blinds down, that's going to give me a, a, a degree of acoustic um, benefit as well. Um, and I'm going to try and um, see if I can get a little bit of foam, um, try and thicken those blinds as thick as I can. Um, to give me give me noise suppression um, and, and also thermal. That means that heat won't get out of my vehicle. Because again, the other problem with the films and the external mesh is they do nothing for heat getting out. They just stop radiant heat getting in. Whereas a blind or a curtain will also stop heat getting out. And of course, thick curtains, 